Hello everyone, Jeanette here with Vivo Vintage Designs and this little guy here is Diesel. So welcome to today's video, but before we get started, let me mention that all the products used and links will be in the description box just below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and give me a thumbs up if you find this video helpful and you enjoyed it. All right, let's get to business. Hi everyone, Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this vase using watercolor, using just one color. Now, this was done on Arches 100% cotton, cold press, 140 pound paper, but today I'll be using for this video, the Canson uh, cold press 140 pound, seven by 10 wa watercolor pad. Now, the quality of paper is not as good as the Arches, but we're going to give it a try anyway. So the list of products that I'm going to use for this video is um, Winsor & Newton Cotman Pan Paints, Princeton Brushes, the Canson Watercolor Paper, Two Chars of Clean Water, Paper Towel for Blotting, Carbon Paper, a black and white image of the painting that you would like to create, a mechanical pencil, washi tape, and binder clips. So to start, I found an image on Google that I liked and I printed it out in black and white. And then I took a sheet of carbon paper and I put it between the paper, the image and my watercolor paper. I used a little washi tape to make sure the paper didn't move. And I just traced out and I made this kind of dark so that you can see it. Usually I wouldn't do it this dark but I wanted you to see the, um, the lines. And one thing I forgot to do, I can see that already, was to trace the water line in the back of the bottle, uh, the glass vase. So I'm just going to lightly pencil that in. And the reason that I printed out this black and white is because it shows me the difference in colors, the depth of color in the reflection. So I found this really helpful. Okay, so there I have the most important parts. The rest I can do by eye. So I'm going to remove the image from the paper and I'm going to keep it close by so that I can use it as reference. And the one color I'll be using is Payne's Gray. If you don't have Payne's Gray, you can create something similar using a little blue and black, either intense blue or um, ultramarine with a little black. Make sure it's very diluted. All right, let's get started. The brush sizes that I'm using are, um, these are Aqua Elite by Princeton. I have a size 12, a size six, an eight, and a three. I'm also going to use some small binder clips to hold my paper down so that it stays as smooth as possible. And then the first thing I'm going to do is use my large brush and I'm going to make a very light wash of the Payne's Gray. And I'm going to begin by adding in the lightest color gray in this painting. So I'm making sure that it's very watery, testing it out on my paper towel and adding a little bit more water. So I can see that the lightest part here is the water and this area here. So I'm going to put in the water and a light wash for the water and down here, I'm going to cover the entire area. So that's a little too dark. And 
If you find your color is too dark, just get some more water on your brush. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring in the background, but it's pretty funny. Okay. So I got the lightest color down. And now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is my size eight. And I'm going to start adding in my shadows. Next, I'll add the shadows that are a little bit darker. So if you just follow what you see in your paint, in your uh, image that you've printed out, it doesn't matter if you get it exact. My first painting that I did was not exact. I just followed what I thought I saw. And I did many layers. When I thought I was finished, I added some more. So you're going to be able to see these um, these marks from the carbon paper because this is really dark. Like I said, I made it dark so that you can see it. But um, if I had when I first did it, I made them a whole lot lighter, very very light, so that they wouldn't be noticeable. They were so light that I could barely see them.
So I notice that the Payne's Gray is like a blackish blue. And if I don't continue to blend it in my palette, the colors kind of separate the blue and the black. So like I said, um, I don't know that my shadowing is exactly as it is in the image. But I don't think it has to be. Okay, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'll just add a little bit of shadow on this side. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so this is mostly dry. But what I'm noticing is that I did the water a little too dark. I should have done it lighter. So what I'm going to do is add a very light wash just in the area above it. I'm going to make sure that my paint is very diluted. Just a really light, light wash. So I'm using a lot of water on my brush. I'll test it out. Yep. I think this will do it. So I'm using the lightest gray value. I don't even know if that's the right term, but I'm using a very light gray wash. so that the contrast is not so severe between the water and the rest of the painting. And I think that's better. I'm also going to do this area here. Okay, let's let that dry. In the meantime, I can add some more reflection down at the bottom. So I've switched over to my size eight brush and I'm just going to darken some of these colors or reflections down here. What I found is that the most important thing is layering. I'm used to painting with alcohol ink and that's a very, very different than painting with watercolor. How does it different? I thought that because I'm familiar with alcohol ink, that painting with watercolor would be easy. Was I ever wrong? I 
painting with watercolor is completely different. And what you may not know is that I've only been painting with watercolor for three weeks. So I believe that if I can do this, you can do this. It's really not as hard as one would think. I, I was very intimidated to paint um, glass. I've seen so many beautiful paintings of glass and it was something that I definitely wanted to do, but I was so afraid because I thought that it would be so difficult. But quite honestly, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. So I think what's important is that you remember that it's just paper and paint. And try not to stress yourself out over it. If it comes out great, that's wonderful. And if it doesn't, it was practice. And next time you, you'll know what you did wrong and you'll figure out how to improve it. So again, I'm just following what I see in my painting. Now again, my my um, shading or reflection is not exactly the same, but it doesn't have to be. Nobody's going to know. So I'm just using the painting as a guideline. Just trying to soften up these lines a little bit in the water. Okay, now I'm going to wait for this to dry and I'm going to come back and do the stem of this flower and then I'll step back and take a look at it. I see a little something here that I didn't add.
let me let this dry completely because the water area is a little bit wet. So when I put in my um, stem, I want to make sure that it doesn't bleed out. All right, so now I'm going to um, paint the stem. As you can see, it's more narrow here than it is in the water. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've mixed up some sapia uh, green with um, some lemon yellow. Let me get my color chart out so I can tell you the colors I'm using. I also mix some sap green with the yellow, uh, lemon yellow over here. And then here I use the sap green. I used um, burnt umber and mix that up to get a nice dark green for the shading. So first I'm going to go into the lighter green. It's like a almost like a lemony, limey green. And I'm going to start adding that color in on the lighter side. It is not in the shade. So I'm going to paint the whole stem in that light green and then let the dark green blend into it when I add it to the side, the other side. And I'm going to make sure that it stays wet so that it bleeds and this paper is kind of hard to work with because it dries very quickly so I'm learning that in order to get the look I want I gotta work quickly so I'm just tapping the darker green in on the right side and letting it blend into the light green Under here where the flower head is it's going to be a little bit darker so I want more shadow in that area and I'll just continue tapping this color in while the paper is still wet Now I'm just going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to load it up with a little bit of the lemon yellow. I'm going to dip it back into the water and I want to add a little bit more of this yellow on this side. For more of a highlight. It's just a thin little line. Most of it will blend in, but in the areas where the paper is dry, it'll stand out just a little bit more. And I can always just clean my brush and kind of blend it in a little bit.
going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and add a little bit more shadow. Okay, that's dry now. So I'm just going to go over it again because I don't like the way this blended over here. I had too much water on the brush and um, all it did was push the darker green away. So I'm just going to add more water and do it again. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to my light green, to my sap green mix here that I used before. And I'm going to add that on the left. And then I'm going to go back into my dark green and start tapping that in again. But I can see that my paper is drying again. So I'm just going to rewet it a little bit and hope that it blends. That's the problem with working with um, lesser quality paper. It dries so quickly. But it's hard to get a good blend but we'll do our best. I didn't have this issue on the um, arches. That paper is just wonderful. I didn't understand when I first began painting just a couple of weeks ago with um, watercolor, what everyone was talking about, how important the paper was. So I bought some very inexpensive watercolor paper and quickly learned how important it is to use better quality paper. So I did go out and uh, purchase some arches, 100% cotton, and I can tell you that the difference is night and day. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Now, to create these flowers, the white flowers, I continued to use my Payne's Gray, but I added a little bit of, um, a little bit of, what raw sienna to it just to give it a different value than the color that I'm using again I'm not even sure if that's the right terminology but just to make the gray a little bit different than the gray that I used for the vase and to do this to make these flowers I wasn't trying to make them perfect I believe that they're paper whites but I use the tip of my brush. Oh, I got water all over the place. Let me mop that up. I just used the tip of my brush and basically outlined too much paint. Outlined the petals and did some veining. But I didn't fill them in completely. because I will be adding a darker gray. But you can see that it's a warmer gray than the one that I used for the vase itself. I just wanted them to stand out a little bit more and to be a little different than the same, you know, using the same gray, I thought it would look flat, so. That's what I did. And remember that if when you're using the carbon paper, don't make your lines as dark as I did. I only did this so that you can see what I'm doing. But you do want them to be a little bit lighter and you can't erase them. 
once they're down. I've managed to lighten them a little bit using a kneadable eraser or a kneaded eraser, but um, you can't erase them completely, so keep that in mind. Okay, so you can see that all I did was create some um, lines. I didn't make them too dark. I didn't fill in the whole petal. And now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the Payne's Gray and a little bit of the Raw Sienna and mix it up. And I'm going to use a heavier consistency on the brush. And I'm just going to use them, trying to see if this is completely dry and it's not. You know what? Let me let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, that's dry now. So I'm going to go in and add some darker veins with a darker bit of gray on my brush and I'm just using the tip. And I'm doing this one a lot darker than I did the previous one, but I want you to see what I'm doing. And I want to keep some of the white. I don't want to lose all my white. I'm basically keeping the veining that I'm adding in the center towards the center of the petals. And I've quickly learned that if you start in the center and you brush out when you pick up your brush, you get a nice bloom, which um, I don't want. So I'm starting my lines from the tip of the petals and going inward instead. And I'm trying to keep the, the uh, strokes in the same direction as the petal grows. And you can do a couple little lines at the tips here and there. And now let's do this part down here, this little bud. And that is like a, almost like a lime green with a little um, raw sienna in it. That's what it looks like to me. So I'm going to add some yellow in here into the sap green and the lemon yellow that I had made earlier. And I'm going to start filling this in. Just going to paint the whole thing that color. And then I will pick up a little bit of the um, wrong color, raw sienna, and I'll tap that in and let it blend. up a little bit darker green and put it on this side. And now for the center of these flowers, they are yellow, but there's a little green towards the center of the flower. So I'm going to pick up the same green and I'm going to Pull it in a little bit into the center of the flower and I'll get some on the inside of the petals as well. 
not a lot. I'm going to keep it light. Just using the tip of my brush from the center and pulling out. And all I really needed here too. Okay. Now I'll let that dry and then I'll come in with a little bit of yellow and some brown for the stamen. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to, I'm using a blow dryer to dry this for the sake of the video. Um, I don't normally. I am teaching myself to be patient, to walk away, find something else to do, and allow it to dry. But for the sake of the video, I am using the blow dryer. So I'll be right back. Okay, so that's pretty dry. Now I'm going to go into my lemon yellow, and I'm going to pick some of that up on my brush. Right on the brush. I'm not going to mix it or anything. And I'm just going to tap some into the center of my flowers and letting it mix with that green and it becomes a little bit brighter. Like that. And then I'm going to go into um, Burnt Umber and I'm going to load that very heavy on my brush. I want it to be nice and thick. So I'm going to give these flowers, the center of the flowers, a quick dry. Bear with me. And I've got the burnt umber on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to Put in some little dots where the stamens are, is rather, and just throw in a little, a little dots, pull them into the center, darken my center just a little bit by dotting, not putting in too much detail, I want this to be simple. I'm in the habit of tapping my um, brush onto a paper towel just to see how much water I have on my brush because that was a real issue for me. So um, tapping it helps me see the consistency of the paint on my brush. And there you go. I'd say this is finished. And I'll say that I do like the way it turned out better on the arches paper, but um, you can see this didn't take very long. And I only used one color for the vase and the reflection, and it turned out pretty well. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everyone.